another sermon from the Garden Lane Church of Christ. Today I want to talk with you for a few moments on the subject of Satan's playbook revealed. Uh, there's different times that people have strategies that, uh, especially sports teams, they try to hide their plays from one another. Uh, think about uh, the University of Clemson or Clemson University and how they try many times to hide their plays from the opposing teams. Or in a baseball situation where many times they have, uh, they have different signs. One might be to touch your nose and that might be to steal or to touch the bill of your cap. And it might be to bunt or to tug on your ear and that might be a, a steal or a double steal. But there's different times that people have different signs. We understand as well that uh, wouldn't it be interesting if we knew Satan's playbook. I remember the story of uh, General Patton in the movie uh, where General Patton, he said, uh, General Rommel, he said, I've read your book. Or the idea is that I've read your playbook. Well, what we see here is Satan's playbook. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and in verse 8, he says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking someone whom he may devour. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, in the latter part of that, it says we're fighting against forces and authorities, against rulers of darkness and the powers of the spiritual world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24, he says, Do you not know that those who run a race all run, but one receives the prize? I run in such a way that you may obtain it. Well, what's God's plan for us? Well, in its capsule form, in Matthew chapter 22 and in verse 36, it says, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, verse 37, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first of the great commandment. And if this was true in the Old Testament, then they were pleasing to God. If this is true in the New Testament, then people are pleasing to God because they're loving God with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind. The second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets so you shall love the lord your god with all your heart and soul and mind how would one counter god's plan if we were able to see if we were able to see satan's playbook how would he counter that well one is to destroy our love for god to hide God from us, to hide his love, to hide his nature, to hide his plan. In Romans chapter 1, verse 18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. We hear a lot about that today. Every four years we hear about people talking about suppressing the vote, whether it's Republicans or Democrats or whoever it is. We're always talking about people that are suppressing the vote. Well, here we see people that are suppressing the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. His inv invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been truly perceived ever since the creation of the world, and the things have been made, so they're without excuse. Maybe it's that you preach tolerance for sin. Or we rebrand sin as good. In 1 John chapter 2 and in verse 3, he says in verse 5, But whoever keeps his word... The love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. In James chapter 4 and in verse 4, he says, Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. We see God and his plan. 
We see parents in Colossians chapter 3 and in verse 20, children obey your parents and everything. For this pleases the Lord. In Exodus chapter 20 and in verse 12, honor your father and your mother, that the days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. But also, uh, there's a lot of people having a problem with rejecting authority concerning the government. In Romans chapter 13 and verse 1, it says, Let every person be subject to governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. It says in verse 3, For the rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you'll receive his approval, for he is God's servant for your good. If you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Or maybe he wants you to quit. Maybe Satan's home court advantage is just too much for me. This is, a, this is a road game for us, if we can use that analogy. We're behind. We're behind enemy lines. In John chapter 15, verse 18, it says, The world hates you. You know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you're not of this world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. And a lot of people, they can't stand that. They don't like that idea about the world hating them. So they'll quit. Maybe they'll quit loving God. Oh, Satan, he doesn't want you to quit and leave the church. Satan wants you to be as unhappy as possible inside the Lord's church. Satan wants you to cause as much division within the Lord's church as you can. Satan wants you to complain all the time about everything to other people so that they will quit loving God as well. That is Satan's playbook. How can I follow God with so many things broken in this world? He says in just an odd little context here in Luke chapter 13, verse 1, then down to verse 4, it says, There were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Do you suppose these Galileans were worse sinners? than all the other Galileans, because they suffered such things. I tell you, unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And the 18 on whom the tower of Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all the other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. The idea is that tragedies are going to occur in life. People are going to die. People are going to die of accidents. People are going to die of cancer. People are going to die of the coronavirus. But at the same time, people need to focus on repenting, repenting of their sins. There are even people on, we would use the term maybe God's team, that really are not doing what they should be doing. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13, it says, But such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming them into the apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, and those whose end will be according to their works. Well, our time is up for today. I thank you for tuning in to another sermon from the Gardner Lane Church of Christ. And until next week, we bid you a very pleasant good day.